The number of texts sent in a day by 16-year-old is normally distributed with a mean of 374 and a standard deviation of 68. And this is totally made up data. Express your answers as a decimal rounded correctly to the thousandth place. We're going to answer three questions. What proportion of 16-year-olds send more than 500 texts in a day? What proportion of 16-year-olds send less than 300 texts in a day? And what proportion of 16-year-olds send more than 400 texts in a day? Okay, so we will start with letter A. The proportion of 16-year-olds who send more than 500 texts in a day. We need to start with our Z-score. Remember, the z-score is x minus the mean over the standard deviation. The reason we need a z-score is so we can standardize our data and we can use our table to find probability. So, our value is 500, our mean is 374, and our standard deviation is 68 based off the material from the previous page. Now, make sure you do your numerator first, right? So, 126 over 68 comes out to be approximately... 1.85. Well, if you look at the table, 1.85 is not in there. So I'm going to go ahead and round that up to a z-score of 1.9. Now, according to our normal distribution, right, the mean has a z-score of 0. So 1.9 falls over here, right, to the right. It's positive. And we want to know the proportion that sent more than 500. So we're talking this area over here. When I look up 1.9 on the table, that gives us area to the left. So the area to the left is 0.971. To find this area to the right, I take all the area, which is 1, minus 0.917, and I end up with a probability of 0.029, right? So a very small chance that you're going to find somebody who sends more than 500 texts in a day based off of this data. Part B. What proportions send less than 300 texts in a day? Well, again, we've got to start with our z-score. So value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Again, start with your numerator. So negative 74 over 68 gives me a z-score of negative 1.08. Well, negative 1.08 is not in our z-score table. So I'm going to go ahead and round that to be approximately negative 1.1. So, when I'm looking at my normal distribution, I'm big on drawing pictures, right? Your z-score at the mean is 0. So, a z-score of negative 1, negative 1.1 1 .1 is going to fall to the left of 0. Think about a number line. And we are looking for less. Less means to the left, so we're looking over here. And that makes it nice and easy because the table gives us area to the left. So, the area to the left is point, uh, uh, point 0.136. So you got a 13.6% chance of finding someone who sends less than 300 texts in a day. And part C, what proportion of 16-year-olds send more than 400 texts in a day? Well, same way to start. Anytime you're asking for a P, right, proportion, probability, percentage, um, all of those can be found using your Z-scores. So value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Again, numerator, 26 divided by 68, gives me a z-score of 0 0.38. 0 0.38 is not in my table, so I'm going to go ahead and round to 0.4. Okay, so we look at our normal distribution. Man, they're getting a little bit rough, aren't they? Z-score of 0 is at the mean. 0 0.4 is going to be slightly to the right, because it's positive, so it's going to be to the right. And we are looking for more than that. So more is to the right. When I look this up in the table, the area to the left of 0.4 is 0.655. So to find the area to the right, I subtract that from 1 because 1 represents all the area under the curve. And I end up with 0.345. So 34.5% chance of finding somebody who sends more than 400 texts in a day.